Shalom, Shalom, Akiyam. First and foremost, I would like to give all praise, honor, and glory to Yahweh Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem Raka Kwadash. I would also like to give a double honors to the elders and apostles of Great Millstone, where I learned this 144% truth. I would also like to say peace and salutations to the hopeful elect scattered throughout all four corners of this earth. It's just Bayan back again through the spirit and power of Yahweh Bahashem Yahweh Shai. And I just wanted to get into a brief lesson uh, speaking on our forefather uh, Joshua, uh, who was an Ephraimite. And uh, he was one of the uh, one of the one of the twelve spies uh, that came back with a good report. Him and Caleb, Caleb was actually from the tribe of Judah. They actually represent the northern and southern kingdom. But needless to say, out of the twelve spies that went to go spy out the land uh, with milk and honey, you know, the Holy Land, there were the only two spies that came back with a good report. See, but Joshua, specifically the son of Nun. Uh, he was glorified in the Lord, uh, being the successor of Moses. And uh, ultimately, you know, he, he followed Yahweh Ba'ashim Yahweh Shai, you know, wholeheartedly. And Yahweh Ba'ashim Yahweh Shai fought for him. And uh, he, was, he was great in battles. He was glorified in battles. And one memorable battle was uh, the battle uh, that took place and it's spoken of in Joshua, the 10th chapter. Uh, with those five kings, the five Amorite kings, um, where Joshua was very successful in that, in the defense of, uh, in the defense, I believe, uh, of Gigel. But uh, yeah, Lord willing, we're going to get into these things because ultimately, um, you know, how Yahweh Bahashim Yahweh Shai did divine things in the days of old, and we're gonna we're gonna go into. A uh, scenario now through Joshua, Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai is going to do the same thing in these latter days, man. Okay, pursuant to Isaiah 59 and 19, man. Lord willing, we're going to get that. You see? Because in these latter days, you know, there's men, women, and children starting with the men, okay, with a level, with a level of faith, okay, that has been sent upon them from on high. That's not only going to, uh, that's not only going to, uh, qualify those that have this level of faith um, uh, to be justified, but it's also going to uh, cause divine uh, occurrences to happen. You see? Because Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai promised that he'll, he'll lift that standard, man. But he's not going to lift a standard where there's doubt. You see? But where there's faith. Okay? And where they elect, well, Lord willing, we're part of that precious number. You better believe that divine intervention is going to take place. So through the spirit and power of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai, what I wanted to do was I wanted to get into uh, the book of Ecclesiastic. It's also known as the book of Sirach. Uh, the 46th chapter, where it actually speaks on the accounts um, of Joshua. Okay? And Lord willing, we'll nail the point home, pretty much tying it in with uh, us here in the latter days, man. Okay, Lord willing, we be of the elect, you know, where Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shah is going to show great works, man. You know, works that we wouldn't believe in, even if it was told unto us. Right? The book of Ecclesiastic is also known as the book of Sarat, chapter 46 and verse 1. And it reads, Yahweh Shai, which is Joshua, right? The son of Nave, which is the son of Nun, right? Was valiant, okay, in the wars and was the successor of Moses and prophecies. You see that? And this is due to Moses and Aaron uh, primarily not um, glorifying um Yahweh Ba'ashim Yahweh Shai upon smoking of the rock. You see, they've they pretty much dismissed the Lord. And, you know, um, I believe you can read about that in, in Numbers. Uh, 
What chapter is that? I believe that's um, Numbers, the 20th chapter. It goes into that. Um, but yeah, pretty much. A matter of fact, let's go get it real quick. Uh, the book of Numbers. Actually, matter of fact, is it 27? No, it's Numbers 27. King of Daughters of Heifer. Uh, let me see. Let me just jump down here. Yeah, this is it's numbers twenty seven going into uh going into Joshua being uh being succeeded over uh Moses. And uh, I believe you can read about it. Actually, as a matter of fact, I think that is numbers twenty. Um, yep, kind of is. Let's get into this real quick so I can give you uh, an insight of what had happened. Going into how Moses and Aaron didn't glorify the Lord. Uh, let's go here. Let's start. Uh, let's start here in verse uh, 7. And the Lord, this is now Numbers 20 and 7. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Take, take the rod and gather thou the assembly together. Thou and Aaron thy brother, and speak ye unto the rock before their eyes, and it shall give forth his water, and thou shalt bring forth to them water out of the rock, so thou shalt give the congregation and their beasts drink. Right? And this is in this is in the wilderness, right? And Moses took the rod from before the Lord as he commanded him, and Moses and Aaron gathered the congregation together before the rock, and he said unto them, Hear now ye rebels. Must we fetch you water out of this rock? And Moses lifted up his hand and with his rod and smote the rock twice. And the water came out abundantly and the congregation drank and their beasts also. So this was a great offense in the eyes of the Lord. You see, Moses said, must we, you see, must we fetch you water out of this rock? But in reality, it was through the spirit and power of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai, man. You see, he didn't glorify the Lord. It was Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai giving him the ability, uh, you know, to do these things. You see, so when you go back, real quick, when you go back to Numbers, uh, Numbers 27 real quick. Right here. When you go back to Numbers 27, it, it says this. And the Lord said unto Moses, Numbers 27 and 12. And the Lord said unto Moses, get thee up into the Mount Abiram. And see the land which I had have given unto the children of Israel. And when thou hast seen it, thou also shalt be gathered unto thy people. And Aaron, thy brother, was gathered, as Salakia, Aaron, thy brother, was gathered. For ye rebelled against me by commandment in the desert of Zen, in the strife of the congregation to sanctify me at the water before their eyes. See, he didn't sanctify the Lord. See, that that is the water of Meribah and Kadesh. In the wilderness, I just want to make that point real quick. You see, so the ultimate, this is why um, when you read further on in this chapter, you know, this is why uh, Moses, uh, uh, Joshua, Salakia ended up being the successor over Moses, man. You see, as we continue on, right? And Moses speaking to the Lord saying, let the Lord thy power, Salakia. let the Lord thy power, spirits of all flesh, set a man over the congregation. See, and then it happened, and then it was Moses. See, and the Lord jumped down to 18, and the Lord said unto Moses, Take thee Joshua, the son of Nun, a man of whom the Spirit, and lay thine hand upon him. So this is how Joshua became the successor of prophecies, you see, mm -hmm. being that he went into the promised land and fulfilled that prophecy, him and Caleb. Now let's go back 
this a rock real quick. So look, yeah, 46. Wait, and continue on. Yahawashai, the son of Nun, right, was valiant in the wars and was the successor of Moses in the prophecies, who according to his name was made great for the saving of the elect of Yahweh by Hashem Yahushai. So you see that there was an elect back in those days, man. And there's been an elect since the foundation of the since the foundations of the earth. Pursuant to Ephesians, man. Right? And taking vengeance of the enemies that rose up against them, that he might set Israel in their inheritance, man. Let's continue on. How great glory got he when he did lift up his hands and stretched out his sword against the cities. Who before him stood to it. Who before him stood to it. For the Lord himself brought his enemies unto him. Did not the son go back by his means. And was not one day as long as two. Right. Uh, yeah, Joshua called unto the Lord. Uh, to hold the sun still man. And the moon. And the Lord hearkened to him man. You see, this is going into that account in Joshua, the 10th chapter, which we're going to go get. Let's continue on. He called upon the Most High Lord when the enemies pressed upon him on every side. And the great Lord heard him. See that? And with hailstones of mighty power, he made the battle to fall violently upon the nations. And, and in the descent of Beth Haran, he destroyed them that resisted, that the nations might know all their strength. Because he fought in the sight of the Lord and he followed the mighty one. And this is what us Akiyama doing, man. We're following the mighty one, man. We're coming under obedience. Okay, under our power, Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai. Which is going to grant us access, Lord willing, we are of the elect to this divine intervention and protection, man. Let's go to this Joshua 10 real quick and get this account. And this lesson is not meant to be long. I just want to bring this out, you know. To show that Yahweh Bashan Yahweh Shai is faithful and true, man. <laughs> you see, uh, he's a man of our power, he's a man of his word. You see? Um, let me see here. I'm gonna um just so we can get the context. I'm gonna start from the top. Even though the point's down in around 13, 14, we'll start from the top though. We'll just read through it. Right? Joshua 10 and 1. Now it came to pass when Enodezedek king of Jerusalem had heard how Joshua had taken Ai and had utterly destroyed it as he had done to Jericho and her king. So he had done to Ai and her, and her king and how the inhabitants of Gibeon had made peace with Israel and were among them that they feared greatly because Gibeon was a great city as one of the royal cities and because it was greater than Ai and all the men thereof were mighty. Right? Therefore, and then, and then, and then Nizadek, king of Jerusalem, sent unto Hoham, king of Hebron, and unto Param, king of Jermuth, and unto Japhia, king of Lachish, and unto Deber, king of Eglon, saying, Come up upon, come up unto me, and help me, that we may smite Gibeon. For it hath made peace with Joshua and with the children of Israel. Therefore, the five kings of the Amorites. The king of Jerusalem, the king of Hebron, the king of Jamath, and the king of Lachish, and the king of Eglon, gathered themselves together and went up, they and all their hosts, and encamped before Gibeon, and made war against it. And the men of Gibeon sent unto Joshua to the camp of Gigal, saying, Slack not thy hand from thy servants. Come up. So it's, so it's uh, Gibeon. I had mentioned in the beginning of this lesson in the, in the defense of Gagal. No, it was in the defense of Gibeon, Salakia, right? Saying, slack not thy hand from thy servants. Come up to us quickly and save us and help us. For all the king of the Amorites that dwell in the mountains are gathered together against us. So Joshua ascended from Gilgal, he and all the people of war with him and all the mighty men of valor. And the Lord said unto Joshua, fear them not, for I have delivered them into thine hand. There shall not a man of them stand before thee, man. You see, and this is exactly what Yahweh Bashem Yahushai said he would do for Joshua in the first chapter if he walked with him. As a matter of fact, let's go get this real quick. We're going to jump back here. 
They ain't proving. This is hey, just proving that Yahweh Shai, hey, he's a man of his word, man. The book of Joshua chapter 1 and verse 5, and it reads, There shall not any man be able to stand before thee all the days of thy life. This is the Lord talking to Joshua, man. You see that? As I was with Moses, so will I be with thee. See? I will not fail thee, nor forsake thee. And this account we're reading in the 10th chapter is going to prove that. Okay? That was fulfilled. You see? More than one time over, man. All right, let's continue on. The book of Joshua, chapter 10, and verse 9. Joshua therefore came unto them suddenly and went up from Gilgal all night. And the Lord discomfited them from before Israel and slew them with a great slaughter at Gibeon and chased them along the way that goeth up to Beth Haran Beth and smote them to, to Ezekah and unto Mechadah. And it came to pass as they fled from, from before Israel and were in the going down to Beth, Beth Haran that the Lord cast down great stones from heaven upon them. We just read about that. And, um, <laughs> we just read about that in, um, Sarah 46 in the sixth verse, right? Let's continue on. And it came to pass as they fled from before Israel and were in the going down to Beth Haran, that the Lord cast down great stones from heaven upon them unto Ezekiah, and they died. They were more which died with hailstones than they whom the children of Israel slew with the sword. You see that? So here it is. Yahweh Bashim and Shai had killed most of them by the hailstorm, man. <laughs> hey, come on now. The Lord was dealing. Then spake Joshua to the Lord in the day when the Lord delivered up the Amorites before the children of Israel. And he said in the sight of Israel, Son, stand thou still upon Gibeon and thy moon and, and thy moon in the valley of Ejelon. And the sun stood still and the moon stayed, man, until the people had avenged themselves upon their enemies, man. This was divine intervention. Two times over right here. The hailstorm and now this. Is not this written in the book of Joshua, which we don't have, right? So the sun stood still in the midst of heaven and hasted not to go down about a whole day, man, right? And there was no day like that before or after it that the Lord Yahweh hearkened unto a voice of a man. You see that? For the Lord fought for Israel. You see that? For the Lord fought for Israel. And he's going to fight for Israel again, man. In these latter days. Let's get what I quoted earlier. Isaiah 59. We're going to close out. I just want to make this point. This is heavy, man. The Lord's dealing with his people, Israel, man. Our so-called Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans that have turned back to obedience, man. He's going to fight for us in these latter days against this damn demon. Esau, Edom, the so-called white man, and his military, man. Isaiah 59 and 19. So shall they fear the name of the Lord from the west and the glory from the rising of the sun right the east. When the enemy shall come in like a flood, the spirit of the Lord shall lift up a standard against him, man. And we always get it. Let's go get it again. Isaiah 59, real quick. Let's get that, let's get that word standard for edification. Strong's H, 5127. Noose. Noose. Right, and it goes into what? To flee, man. To escape. You see, take flight, depart, disappear. To put to flight. Hey, divine intervention is going to take place. Hide, look at hide. To cause to disappear. Cloaking abilities, you see that? Hey, divine intervention is going to take place, man. Okay? And we believe this wholeheartedly, man. Because we know our power is faithful and true. I'm going to leave you Akiyam and Akwa with this. Numbers 23. We are not to fear this demon, man. The Lord got us, man. Numbers 23 and 19, and it reads, Yahweh, Bahashim Yahweh Shai is not a man that he shall lie, neither the son of man that he shall repent. Have he said, and shall he not do it? Or have he spoken, 
and show he not make it good, man. We just proved that Yahweh Bash and Yahweh Shai, he, he, he said what he meant and he meant what he said, man, in the defense of Joshua. Hey, and he's going to do the same thing for his elect in these latter days, man, pursuing that Isaiah 59 and 19. Hey, we got, hey, there's more with us than I with them, Akiyam and Akwaf. We have nothing to fear, man. Yahweh Ba Hashem, Yahweh Shai, the host of heaven, heaven, Salakia, the host of heaven. Okay, Michael the Archangel. Hey, they're, they're our brother, they're, they're fighting for us, man. You see? Hey, Daniel 12 and 1. Michael's gonna come, man. And defend his elect. Lord willing, we're part of that precious number, man. All praise, honor, and glory. To Yahweh Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem Raka Kwedash. Double honors to the elders and apostles of Great Millstone, where I learned this 144% truth. Lord willing, you Akiyam and Akwaf were edified. Barakata Yahweh, Barakata Yahweh Shai, Kal Halalim La Yahweh, Bahashem Yahweh Shai, Bahashem Raka Kwedash. Shalom.